We are not responsible for your behaviour. We believe in common sense. No, 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 no crisis, no. I'll get Britain working again with tax cuts and cheese. You're listening to News Talk on Strange But True Radio, episode 11 of 2023, with Philip Jones and Philip Keeler in the UK. On this episode, in the UK, the Home Secretary is accused of asking civil servants to help her avoid a speeding fine and driving awareness course. And in Australia, there are major plans to stop recreational vaping. We're downloadable from wherever you get your podcasts from, including Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify and Amazon Music. You're listening to News Talk. First, here's what's trending around the world. In Ukraine, the Russians have not taken full control of Bakhmut. That's according to Vladimir Zelensky. But dictator Vladimir Putin has congratulated the Wagner groups and Russian army for what he called the area's liberation. Meanwhile, all G7 leaders have announced more help and more togetherness in helping Ukraine liberate itself as a sovereign nation. Next, in South America, El Salvador, 12 people have been killed and dozens more are injured after they were smothered during a stampede at a football stadium. The incident happening when supporters pushed through one of the access gates at the monumental venue in Cuscatlan, 25 miles from the capital, San Salvador. In Iran, authorities have executed three men sentenced to death in connection with the nationwide anti-government protests last year. They were convicted over their alleged involvement in a shooting attack that killed three security personnel in November. Human rights watchdog Amnesty International says they were subjected to unfair trials and allegedly tortured. And in the US, NASA has brought in a second billionaire to help it put astronauts back on the moon. Officials are already working with Elon Musk's SpaceX firm on a descent system. It's now hoped Amazon.com founder Jeff Bezos will be successful in building a landing craft to take crew down to the lunar surface later this decade. To our top story then, in the UK, the Home Secretary is accused of asking civil servants to help her avoid a speeding fine and driving awareness course. Uh, Swella Braverman is her name. She doesn't think she has to pay a fine or do a driving awareness course for speeding. Uh, Well, all of us public plebs would, of course, have to. Uh, Speaking about a not-so-brave Braverman, Prime Minister Rishi Sunak who has been at a meeting with the G7 in Japan, said he understands how she's now paid the fine and uh, expressed deep regret. Um, Phil, one rule for us, but that pretty much optimises the whole of the Conservative Party, doesn't it? One rule for us, one rule for them. Uh, What are your thoughts? Yes, that does, yes, but this is something whereby it... I believe it has happened in the past where people have asked for a private um, tuition on driving. You have to do, if you get caught for speeding and it's your first offence, you've got a choice of taking points or doing a speed awareness course. So she, all she did was ask for was to do a speeding awareness course on her own, which I think has happened before. Or with I think her it camera. It's possible to do that. Camera the main problem something. was that she asked for asked civil service, civil servants to see if they could arrange it for her and use their uh, power to do that. So she was, in a sense, abusing her position of power. So it's not really a big deal. I think they're making a mountain out of a molehill. I think the real issue is her attitude towards immigration um, because it's soulless and heartless. She's trying to say, we should train, we should train lorry drivers, fruit pickers, and... um, butchers yeah 
in in the UK rather than having people come in from overseas to do those jobs. There are there were some relaxations put on fruit pickers in seasonal fruit pickers, so that they, it's easier for them to get a visa and it's easier for to get HGV drivers to get a visa. I'm not sure about butchers. I think the HGV drivers. Um, uh, relaxation of visa application has been pulled. So really, she's just trying to say that we don't want any immigration. We want to use our workforce that's available. However, I think the workforce that's available could uh, couldn't necessarily do the jobs. You've got to be sort of physically active to be able to pick fruit, and you've got to be able to do it at speed. So it's not the easiest thing in the world to do. HGV drivers have to pay quite a lot of money to become an HGV driver. So they could, the government could fund HGV driver training, but they don't seem to be offering that, which seems to be a very good solution or very good uh, move in the right direction. And um, as far as butchers are concerned, I really don't know. I mean, we could train more of them or provide grants, but if people want to come from overseas, I don't see why we shouldn't. Mm. Of course, what they also fail to realizes that um because of brexit and they're saying because of brexit where we should be able to do all these things well if we if we didn't have brexit people would be able to move from this country and work overseas so net migration would in effect go down if we had some if we hadn't had brexit because now you know if you want to go and work in in on the continent of europe it's very very difficult to well sorry it's not very very difficult it is difficult it's far more difficult than it was before before yeah. you didn't have to do anything you applied for a job and that was it you know off you went if you got the job now i imagine you have to jump through all manner of hoops because at the moment we can only stay for six months then we have to i think we have we've only got a six month stay and then we have to come back to the uk so brexit is a problem as usual the members of parliament on both sides on all sides apart from the lib dems refuse to accept the fact that we need to align ourselves with europe um, because what we've in effect done is we've put sanctions up against ourselves, which is damaging our economy and making inflation increase. I'm moving off the point slightly, but, you know. And um, what we've done is we've, we, we've, we wanted to punish Iran, or the United States wanted to punish Iran, so they put sanctions up against Iran to damage their economy or their, to, to reduce their econ economic activity and make them poorer. And we've put sanctions up against ourselves, which is monumentally stupid. Yeah. And also it's creating problems with migration because Im immigration and migration, it's causing problems with that because before we had very, very good relations with um, the French and then foolish MPs such as um, that tr Liz Truss were talking about the jury's out on whether we have a good relations with France, which is a very foolish yeah, thing to say. We should be yeah. trying to build bridges, not tear them down. Yeah, exactly. Um, <clears throat> Liz Truss made a speech somewhere. Uh, she, I think she was, was she in Europe somewhere this week or last week talking? Uh, yesterday she made a... Uh, speech to conference where two protesters stood up and asked her questions about what she was doing what i found bizarre was um bouncers big big men come along and grab hold of these two protesters one was a huge man and they they grab hold of both arms and they they just guide them out of the room the other one was a very small woman making protest towards um cruella braverman and so they, Braverman, sorry, sorry. There's been so many different politicians in uh, in Parliament over the last uh, two years. It's very difficult to keep track of them. Exactly. Um, and anyway, they. So she she. Um, what I found bizarre was they all were applauding her, and they were in. You know, they were all looking up to her, saying uh, as though she was some kind of icon who should be admired. I have no less than zero admir admiration for this woman i don't think she should be in the job i think her attitude is perverse i think it's drawn from the fact that she's probably first or second or maybe third generation immigration immigrant yeah. so she is overreacting to other immigrants coming into the country yeah. which is a common it's not me being racist it's just a common occurrence i mean in certain uh, parts of the world you can see this becomes apparent as uh, minorities b 
increase in in size, and it's just normal. It's just normal. Well, the previous one, uh, Home Secretary, was exactly the same. Um, what I want to ask you is: Do you think that there should be an investigation into this whole public um, public servant fiasco, uh, or like opposition parties are calling? Was it should, with regard to the fact that she speed awareness they're making and, a big fuss about yeah, the fine. fact that she didn't pay a speeding fine directly and she tried to not do her course or is it just a non-story i think it's a non-story yeah i think it's sensationalist i think it's a diversion away from the real issues at hand i mean who cares whether she pays a speeding fine who cares whether she does a course or not she wasn't trying to avoid doing the course she was trying to she just wanted to do it on her own Mm. And I've had a speeding fine about four years ago, and um, I would have I would have gladly done the course, but I I had to take points on my license because they said I was doing forty four miles in a thirty mile an hour limit. Fair yes, enough. Yes. Well, it wasn't fair enough, so I phoned them up and I, well, I wrote to them and said, "Oh, great, okay, thanks. Please send me the evidence of the fact that I was doing forty four, and they didn't have any evidence. So I said, "I know this is an aside." So I said, "Oh, <laughs> okay. Well, in that case, because you've got no evidence of me speeding." then um, obviously you're not, you, I can't be nicked. And they said, well, no, we're going to nick you anyway. Right. Seriously, they were going to... So if you get stopped for speeding, yeah. don't sign anything. I would suggest or don't sign anything unless they have evidence of you speeding. Yeah. Or if you do want to sign something, say, yes, I'll sign this, but make it subject to the fact, subject to evidence. I yeah. want evidence that I was speeding. These, they had a handheld camera, and they said if I'd been doing 42 miles an hour, uh, I would have been fine. But as it's 44 miles, it's effectively I had a double speeding ticket in one hit. <laughs> so I thought, well, they're bound to have the evidence. Of course, they didn't. And two miles an hour with a handheld camera is negligible anyway. So I could have argued it. But then again, if you go against the police in, in these matters, generally the magistrate is told to side with the police. Yeah. So you've, it's a losing battle, so it's a waste of time. So I was told, given legal advice, and they said, let it go, pay the money, and walk away. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, I think, you know, she took the points on the license. I, if it was me, I would have, I would have done the course. And, but she didn't want to be with the hoi polloi because she's a bit of a snob. She should have had the good grace to just go along with it. And, well, I suppose she, instead she was using her influence to try and manipulate the situation, which is why people are getting upset. But, of course, yeah. a lot of these political arguments are, are pointless it's like a lot of children arguing about things that really aren't important because they're trying to get one over on each other all the time i you suppose know? it I might have it, been i find it childish it might have been quite difficult for her because it was going to be on uh, on on zoom or something like that and i think the other she didn't want her webcam to be on because and actually the whole session would have been people looking at their cameras going, that's Suella Braverman, that's Suella Braverman. Well, so these speed awareness courses are recorded, are they? Yeah, are they not, yeah, they're not recorded, but they're, they're done on Zoom and, and the computers now, so people don't have to meet up. Well, what's wrong with that? Well... Well, is she saying that could be broadcast? No, she's saying that she didn't want to be on, on a webcam with a load of people seeing her. All she's got to do is sit there. A lot of people yeah. see her making speeches, don't they? Yeah, but maybe it wasn't. It was the idea of being well, on that course. Sounds like a bit of a waste of everybody's time to me, quite frankly. Yeah. Haven't we got better things to discuss? I mean, shouldn't we be discussing? A, shouldn't we be talking about if we want to get net migration down? Perhaps if we open the yeah. doors to to the European, the continental Europeans, maybe maybe we could have they'd open the doors to us, and so we could go and work on the continent ourselves. Mm. Maybe they should be talking about that, but they probably haven't worked that one out because they're a bit, they're not exactly the most intelligent people, I, I find. While we're talking about sort of politics, and I just wanted to do a, a different aside very quickly and just get your thoughts about this. So, um, th obviously, the G7 have been meeting in uh, Japan uh, this last week to talk about uh, Ukraine Russia fiasco war. Um, and I just thought, right, <clears throat> so. Russia's obviously very hated by a lot of the world, majority of the world, let's say. Yeah. Well, and what would happen if we started just to invite Putin to all the important world meetings and say, come on, Putin, come on, Putin. Let's, let's get, because he must feel a bit like a person who's not bullied, but he must, the unpopular kid at school. If we gave him a bit of love... 
and said, come on, come on, Putin, let's have a chat. Get round the table with us. Do you think that would smooth things over rather than... I'm not sticking up for Putin, by the way, but I just thought... The G7 I don't think they have to condone together. his behaviour, but I don't, see the re- I don't see why they don't ask him to come along and have a chat about the war. Yeah. They could have a meeting... And that would be a very difficult thing. I mean, in it'd many ways, di- it'd be very difficult. But, I'm not saying it. Would well, be if he, if he, would he be prepared to turn up and face all the G7 leaders yeah. and justify his actions in the Ukraine? Yeah. How could he possibly do that? And we guarantee. Why don't they just talk to him about what needs to be done rather than say, because he's saying part of his argument, I believe, is that he's saying that um, the Ukraine wanted to join the European Union, which means that if they join the European Union, they will have a border. The European Union will have a border with Russia directly yeah. instead of having a buffer zone with the Ukraine. Yeah. And so he's saying that that. That is a re- that is a threat. So yeah. therefore, he wants to invade Ukraine to stop that happening. But well, then let's again, remove the threat. That's a false. That's a false argument in itself. Because yeah. if he did invade Ukraine and Ukraine became part of Russia, then that that border would be there anyway. But so, let's remove. What could the, he do? He we, could do all sorts of things. They yeah. could have discussions and decide what they could do to move this thing forward instead of war. And discussion is always better than war. Become, let, let's have a discussion and become friends with Russia. I'm not. I'm not saying as much as we can, buddy buddies. But we become friends, so we have an open dialogue. I think that would be That's much. That's a very better. clever idea, Phil. I don't, it took me a while to think about that because, uh, and also you'd have to ensure that um, you know the international uh, police, whatever they are called, uh, are not going to arrest him on 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 these court charges war. that he's war, war crimes but i just i it, it would be much better i mean i don't like trump particularly but he did become sort of friends with uh kim jong-un in north korea and mm. that did smooth things i believe for a while i think that's a really interesting point because governments in in many ways like conflict mm. yeah yeah Conflict can be a distraction. Conflict can create fear. Concrete, concrete make conflict makes it easier to manipulate populations. So, behind the scenes, it may be that if you have a Brexit vote and it divides the country, the people are more easily manipulated. Yeah. This is a well-known political yeah. ideology yeah. because it's, at the end of the day, it's all about manipulation of society so for example united states of america are manipulated by the media they're manipulated by guns although they a lot of people in the united states think that guns are a very good thing a lot of them don't are governed by the fact that if you go out at night you could get shot yeah imagine if you went walk down the street take your dog out at midnight Mm. um, walking down the street and you're just going for a stroll And you know that the person you meet down in the in the mid at the middle of the night could be carrying a gun. Would you want? Would you choose to take your dog for a walk at midnight? Probably no. not. No, no. So that's a way of controlling the control. Also, the meat violence in in move films and other things of that nature uh, create fear. Yeah, yeah. And terrorism creates fear. Um, again, the United States state, state spends billions on terrorism when in fact toddlers call kill kill more people in the united states with handguns that are loaded in the house than do terrorists so it's quite an iron irony there mm. so there's lots of lots of old things that could be adju- addressed but which aren't you know so it, it's i think it's i think a lot of politicians don't really live in the real world in the fact because of the nature of politics yeah politicians say things because they want to create an effect they don't necessarily act in the best interest of the populace they act in the best interests of themselves yeah. yeah the generalissimo franco hated politicians so he didn't have any i don't think he had any politicians in, in spain a lot of people said he was a terrible dictator because he was a fascist well a lot of people in 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 spain would say the opposite they say well there were no the drug there was crime was incredibly low there was no drug abuse in relative terms um there was peace 
they lived in a very secure environment um, and everybody was a lot happier when he was dictator for nearly 40 years. So it's quite interesting. I mean, politically, the most uh, beneficial form of government is a dictator who is a benefactor, mm. who wants to care for his society because he's doing the best he can for the society and he doesn't have to concern himself about political impression because political impression is hugely damaging, yeah, yeah. which is why a lot of people, say, for example, complain about the House of Lords. Well, I am all for the House of Lords. I think it's very important to have a second camera to balance the opinions of the houses, the elected house because the elected house often creates laws for him to, to create impressions so they're re-elected and that's very very harmful because what we want what we should have is politicians who only want to act in the best interests of society so for example now and i know i'm going back to brexit people deny that brexit's damaging because they don't think it's politically conducive for them to maintain their position there you go hmm Okay, well, we'll probably talk about Brexit next week uh, and we'll have a new story about that. So this is Strange But True Radio. He's Phil Jones. I'm Phil Keeler. We're going to be going over to Australia uh, next and we're going to be talking about recreational vaping. We've all been doing it here for such a long time. Well, I did, but I've stopped now. More on that in a moment. Do stay with us. This is Strange But True Radio. He's Phil Jones. I'm Phil Keeler. We're back for another episode. Get the latest breaking news on your phone. If you download Twitter and uh, add us using our Twitter handle, it's very active on Twitter at the moment, at StrangeBTR is the uh, is the handle. Uh, contact us by email studio at uh, strangebuttrueradio.com. Always like to uh, get your views on the news. (laughs) 
that that noise was me headbutting the microphone. I'm okay. No bruises, no bleeding. Uh, in Australia, there are major plans to stop recreational vaping. Uh, the government there are desperately trying to stop youth vaping by banning the sale of disposable devices at uh, corner stores. Instead, you'll only be allowed to buy a vape from a pharmacy on prescription. Well, there's still a lot of detail to be worked out on if this is going to get the go-ahead. Vaping has been around for years and is just as addictive, if not more, than smoking real cigarettes, in my view, because I've done it. Uh, Vaping has been linked to deaths, but the effects of smoking are still really, or vaping rather, are still really yet to be seen. Although, you know, when I went to have a heart scan because I I had a hole in my heart as a baby and that was then uh, stitched up but I have a heart consultant I have to go to every five years when I went to the heart had a heart scan my doctor suggested it has a real and lasting impact on the heart and the circulatory system and he told me or she told me rather me being a bit sexist she told me that I should stop vaping altogether like straight away don't do it um phil is australia right do you think to try and cut down the amount of people vaping especially in our younger generation i think so yes i don't i think it it seems to be readily available for youngsters and it is a problem within youth culture for people starting using vaping because they're saying it's better than smoking and probably the implication of that is not really that harmful when in fact we don't as you rightly say we don't really know what the effects of vaping are do you remember so when vaping could be incredibly dangerous because there are toxins in it it could be i mean in theory i doubt if it is but in theory it's possible but there may yeah. be side effects that people haven't considered in their analysis of the how damaging it is to your health do you remember when like maybe 15 20 years ago i think it was probably when i was about 18 i'm in my 40s now so 20 years ago we had uh, this buzzword called alka pops do you remember that yes the buzzword alka pops where they were making fruity drinks with vodka and making them all very look very sexy for for young people i see a sort of comparison with that where I agree. vaping is all fruity flavors i mean they're i, I must say you're I, absolutely right i i i um i absolutely loved vaping it, it was fantastic and but definitely more addictive than me having uh a few marlboro lights in the evening when i did smoke in my 20s definitely more addictive because you've just got this little stick that you press a button and you can breathe, breathe it all the time. And Phil, you'll remember when we used to, when I used to present, well, when I presented this show, not used to, when I presented this show, I would often have a vape in my gob and you wouldn't be able to see me on camera because there'll be so much smoke in the room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you used it for medical reasons, didn't you, initially? Well, yeah, so, <clears throat> yeah, exactly. So I have pain, I have back pain, I have leg pain. Um, I have this thing called spina bifida occulta, and so I'm in a lot of pain most of the time. So I found smoking CBD oil, so not cannabis, not not anything illegal, but CBD oil, and that was very good for pain. It may, used to make you feel a bit, a bit spaced out, but that was that was fine. Um, and so then uh, I, I found somebody called Tom Thomas, uh, who I've spoken to on the show before. Um, and he was he was smoking. He was smoking like, uh, what is it? Nicotine, nicotine. He was smoking nicotine. So I had a vape on his and thought, oh, that's lovely as well. And ended up on vape, uh, uh, CBD and nicotine. What happened then? Uh, well, then a year and a half later, I went to the, the GP and had a heart scan. They said, you need to stop this straight away. Mm. All of so it. I think what you're saying is you would you were prepared to smoke a vape with nicotine in it, but you wouldn't smoke a cigarette with nicotine in it. Obviously, a cigarette's got nicotine in it. Yeah, because, because we all know that smoking is really, really, really bad. Like real cigarettes is really bad. And e-cigarettes are just a little bit more unknown but we are now finding little, little, 
little bits of information like what I think what you're told yeah me, so what you're I think bad. what you're saying is that people were prepared to use a vape where they wouldn't use a cigarette yeah yeah because they think that a vape is although it's a pleasant experience it's not something which damage that which they believe it's is something which doesn't damage their health which yeah. isn't true so the vaping culture has a false image in yeah. effect yeah it's totally it's a false culture and you know yeah, all these little, all these uh, little kids, all these kids who are seventeen, eighteen, going to the corner shop to buy their fruity vapes. They all think it's safe, and I don't think it is. It's, I think it's just really addictive. It's just like alcohol, addictive if you have too much of it. Mm. Yeah, maybe, maybe, and it's very easy to use as well. How do you think that this is going to work then in Australia? So we've got. The, they, the idea is that you go to the pharmacy so you've got to go to the doctor first to get a prescription yes uh, and and then so their theory is that it will stop the kids from vaping but anyone who's a, a, a real smoker goes to the doctor to say i want to quit smoking go into vaping it's a sort of, i i mean I, I see what they're doing but i think maybe vaping has been around so long it won't work Well, the only way it's not going to work is if the kids can get it, get the vapes illegally mm. from maybe overseas or maybe people who are prepared to supply within Australia, you know, through in, Ill, illegal imports, because I doubt you'll be very, it'll be very difficult to manufacture them. Um, they're saying that if they, the police will have uh, power to destroy any vape products that they discover... So that will influence the situation. But as in things that are illegal in youth culture, things that are illegal become suddenly attractive. So it may, in fact, stimulate people to want to use it and make it even more trendy to use a vape, Yeah, which is damaging. But these things have to be considered. But, I mean, personally, I think it's better if it's... It's a bit like it should be difficult to get hold of. And um, I think the Australian idea is probably best because yeah. vaping doesn't really help anybody, I don't think. No. No, I think I think it might it might just work. I can't imagine the, the the government implementing it over here, but if they did, they, it might work as well. I think there'd just be uproar. Equally, it would be a good idea for government to uh, make make campaigns for people to understand that vaping is bad for your health. Mm. Because I think a lot of people are starting to think that vaping isn't really bad for your health when in fact it's not very good for your health at all. No. And it is damaging. So that may be that the fallacious logic used in order to justify the use of a vape, vape isn't isn't correct. And um, It was a big eye-opener for me when my doctor said, you need to just stop that straight away. Yeah, because people think that vaping's okay. Yeah. And, of course, the marketing people are not going to tell you it's really, really bad for you, which it is. Maybe the, the, there should be government health warnings splattered all over it. And equally, in the UK, you can use vape. It's up to the the owner of the property where you, where you want to smoke. I mean, pub, in the, you can smoke in public place. You can use a vape in public places should the owner of that public place allow you to do so. Yeah, which I, is quite I, odd. Yeah. So they could ban vaping everywhere. I think as well it would be helpful for us, ourselves in the UK. I just think that you know we should these things should be banned. I don't think they should necessarily be banned, but we should make certainly make sure that people are aware of the health risks. It's more so difficult. the kids are given the choice of using a vape. They can tell them that it's it could be worse than smoking. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I think. Well, see what happens in Australia. I'd be interested to to, to monitor that and uh, we'll give you a few updates when we know more. That's it for this edition of Strange But True Radio. We are news talk for a mixed up generation. He's Philip Jones. I'm Philip Keeler. Join us for a new podcast available to download every Monday from 1pm UK time. Thank you.
to get a policy to realign with Europe, the better. <laughs> no, 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 crisis, no.